In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to the altar of God here at church, to the altar of our hearts at home, we turn our attentions back to the Lord now. We acknowledge our sins, and we, we call upon the wondrous font of God's uh, divine mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. 
And the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. And let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen me but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. On the evening of that first Easter, the disciples were not enjoying uh, the Easter festivities. They were afraid. They were afraid for their lives, uh, and they were locked into that fear. Any friendship they had had with their fellow Jews was pretty much up in the air. They were sort of enemies now. They had sinned against Jesus and left him to suffer and die alone. And to top it off, they had heard that Jesus had come back from the dead. What would he do to them for their betrayal? The disciples were fearful, fearful and very much alone. But then something wonderful happened. Rather than a rebuke and a punishment, Jesus came to them with an offer of peace. God took the initiative and he broke into their little community of fear and transformed it into a community of peace. Today on Divine Mercy Sunday, we see that the first sign of God's mercy after the resurrection was this offer of peace. 
But it wasn't, um, it wasn't a gesture or, or just a word of peace. The peace was Jesus himself. St. Paul says that in Christ Jesus, you who once were at a distance have become close to us, for he is our peace. He who made the two into one and broke down the dividing wall. For us Christians, a peace is not a concept, it's a living person, it's the risen Jesus among us. He is our peace. Jesus is the catalyst for our peace. Jesus is the cause of our peace. He is the one who makes us one. His Holy Spirit is the same Holy Spirit that's in me and in the person in front of me and in the person next to me and in the person in the next parish in the next city over. Whenever we eat the body of Christ in the Eucharist, it's the very same body which is in me that's in my neighbor and in the person behind me and in the person in some other parish in some other part of the world. Jesus and his extreme generosity in sharing himself is what transforms people into a community of peace. When we accept Jesus' offer of peace, when we, when we take him into us through faith and through prayer, through the sacraments, it affects, or it should affect, how we live amongst ourselves. Suddenly, because of the risen Jesus uh, living among us and within us, we are members of the one body. And a healthy body is not at war with itself. A healthy body is, is at peace within itself. There's mutual respect as beloved sons and daughters of the one Father. There is order. There's a spirit of service for the good of each other. There's giving and receiving in a spirit of thanks. There's a tangible spirit of caring for one another, looking out for the well-being of one another, uh, encouragement of one another. There's forgiveness and mercy, kindness and generosity, humility, uh, and building one, up, uh, one, building one another up uh, in faith and hope. Jesus is our peace because he's the cause of all these signs of peaceful living among his people. And you know, every Sunday we gather around Christ our peace in the spirit of thanksgiving and peace. It's kind of like the movie How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You know, at the very end of the movie, all the Who's in Whoville are gathered in the village square. And there were certainly plenty of things for them to be upset or worried about. But rather than congregate around those things, they simply come together around that living, pulsing star which has come down from above. That light, that living spirit, is the cause of their peace in the midst of everything that's wrong. Well, for us, Jesus is that living, pulsing light we gather around every Sunday. He is the cause of our peace. And that's just the same as it was for those uh, people who first believed in the risen Jesus, that little community we heard about in the Acts of the Apostles. At the heart of their life, living together, was the living, risen Jesus among them present in the Holy Spirit, present in the Eucharist, and present in each other as parts of the one body. That little community there in the Acts of the Apostles was a picture of heaven and earth. There was a peace among themselves and peace with God, all because of Jesus. And you know, as much as all that sounds like pie in the sky, it's nonetheless what we aspire toward uh, even today, 2,000 years later. It's also at the heart of the good news we hope others will be drawn into. The good news that God has come to free us from our fears and to bring us peace, as it was in the beginning of all things. And so as we celebrate this Divine Mercy Sunday, we remember that the first gift of mercy God gave his disciples after the resurrection was the gift of peace. The gift of the risen Jesus in our midst. Look, Jesus says, see my flesh, believe and live in peace. And we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us, when and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And once again, we entrust our prayers to the Lord. We pray for the church, that being attentive to God's beloved Son through prayer and devotion, we would more truly be his continuing presence in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who serve our country through elected or appointed offices, that God would bless them with courage and integrity, wisdom and prudence, let us pray to the Lord. For those in need of God's healing grace, including Tom, Russell, Norb, Kathy, Carrie, Marlene, those on our prayer chain, and those we hold in thought in prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. For our vocations to faithful married life, consecrated religious life, the diaconate and the priesthood from our parish and diocese, let us pray to the Lord. For those being baptized this weekend at St. Clair, that they know the Lord's friendship and live as his disciples in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers written in our, in our parish books of prayer and for the prayers we offer to the Lord from the altar of our hearts today. Let us pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of St. Clair Parish for whom this Mass is offered, and for all those who have fallen asleep in Christ, including Roseanne Van Drachek, may they live in heavenly peace. Let us pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you, your sons and daughters, with our prayers. We lay them before your throne of mercy and grace. We ask you in your kindness to receive these prayers and to answer them according to your goodwill for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in 
in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.